Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. This is Eat and Drink with Ali Hassan and Marco Timpano. The podcast where back of house Ali and front of house Marco talk food and drink. Heads up. These two spent decades in restaurants, so some mature content and language is bound to come up. Get ready for Eat and Drink. Forks up. All right, so we're here. I want to say, I want to, I want to, woo, but I can't, I know how you get, you, you're just, you're an audiophile, and when I woo, you're, it's like a bad start for you, so no woo, but I, I'm excited, Thank I'm excited you. to be, can I just say I'm excited? You should, you are excited, and uh, I can describe your excitement to people, I'm not an audiophile, that's a problem, if I was, then I'd be able to deal with that. He muffles me, he muffles muffle. me, he censors me, he does I'm, not I'm allow me to silencer. express myself. I'm the silencer on your uh, I don't know, I, look, I, if this show was called, um, it's called Eat and Drink, but we drink first and eat second right i love food but something about like hey i'm here we're about to have a drink i just get i get pumped up i get pumped up your eyes light up as soon as you press record that makes me Does excited it? Does yeah, it? yeah oh. your eyes generally light up i have uh, dead eyes uh, yeah when i'm not by the way that's a uh, dead eye over there is marco timpano woo woo is ali hassan <laughs> yeah it's woo hoo i oh, think oh, sorry but, uh, I, you know Last week, I said I was going to be chill this week. I was going to be calm and cool and collective. Did you say I, just, that? I said I was going to be just, I wasn't going to be my. Oh, you weren't going to drop anything. I was, no, I, I'm still going to drop. I can't guarantee that. Yeah, okay. But okay. Um, I was going to take it a little easier. So I'm going to make the drink first. That way you can drink it while I'm talking about it. How does sure, that sound? All right. Sure. So I won't even tell you what the drink is. I'll just start putting the ingredients. It's like I've got a blindfold on. Well, today. no, I'll tell you what is in it, and maybe you can determine what I'm making at the time. So. Uh, I mean, you told me you were going to talk. What do yeah. you want from me? I, I need, to grab, I need to grab my jigger. Okay, no stress. No stress. He no had to stress. leave and go get something. Of course, God forbid you were prepared for Listen, once. The problem is I'm too prepared. Is That's that, the I problem. You're, okay. uh, you're an over-preprepare. Sure. Two ounces of vodka. Yeah. Uh, any t- uh, particular type? What are you partial to? You know, I like uh, <laughs> I like a Russian vodka. I like you a Smirnoff. Would. Yeah, I, do. I I like a rush. I, if it can be potato vodka, uh, a vodka made from potatoes, yeah. I'm even happier because that's what vodka was originally made from. Now, so many vodkas are just grain grain alcohol, right? So uh, name a potato vodka brand. I couldn't tell you. you. Couldn't no, I, uh, there's some Russian ones. Drink first, ask questions exactly. later. Okay. <laughs> exactly. There is a Polish one that I know. Yes, is, there is. That is a potato vodka. We had it. Enjoyed it. Um, I'm an iceberg fan. I really. Iceberg's I, a great I feel vodka. Feel like if if you haven't tried iceberg. Clean, uh, just you know. I, that's what you you don't want. You don't want your vodka to have too much bite. You know, you want it to be clean and taste great. And iceberg is uh, is wonderful. One I ounce cranberry. Ju- one ounce one cranberry, ounce cranberry juice. juice. <laughs> you went. You went very NPR radio on that. <laughs> um, yeah, and iceberg. You know, if you are Canadian, it's uh, it's it's one of ours. It's a Newfoundland product, and it's amazing. It's wonderful. Yeah, we have some great booze in Canada. I'm going to just say that, folks. Um, three quarters ounce. Fresh lime juice. <laughs> You're really, really sexing it up every time you pour something. So, so far we got vodka, cranberry juice, lemon, lime actually, lime, lime. juice. Uh, uh, allegedly fresh. I didn't see it be squeezed, but look, I see it. Look, uh, in look there's you there's can pulp. see the, there's, there's, there's pulp in there. Yeah, okay, All perfect. All right. Probably should have strained it, but that's not going to happen <laughs> on today's show. Three quarters <laughs> ounce, don't. triple sec, triple sec. Do you have an idea what, what I'm making at this point? Um, yeah, I do, man. All right, I know this drink. The cranberry is this uh, is this sex on the beach ish one of those? It's, yeah, one it's of those, uh... you know it's interesting you say that it's not sex on the beach, but I could see why you would you would guess that. You'll is, get it in just a second once I pour it out. Is it a cosmopolitan? You got it. It's hey, a cosmopolitan. there it is. What am I okay. talking about? Sex on um, the beach. And the reason I wanted to make this is because I wanted to use I wanted to make a, a cocktail with pomegranate juice because it's going to complement what you make in sure. the next segment. Right? That said, you haven't put any pomegranate juice in there. Yeah. Did I say cranberry? You said cranberry. Oh, sorry. Pomegranate You're an juice. animal. Pomegranate, Pomegranate juice. <laughs> <laughs> it says it all sexy, but says the wrong thing. I don't, I don't get how I'm not, I'm not allowed to woo, but you can shake that monstrosity. Oh, you, you know what? what? It's supposed to be cranberry juice. I'm, I'm using pomegranate juice. It's supposed to be cranberry okay, juice. Okay, so you're doing a a, a, posmo, a posmopolitan? I'm doing a posmopolitan. <laughs> I kind of messed this up, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna stress about no. it. Well, good for you. For well, you know. there's, if there's one thing you are uh, to a fault, it's honest. Hey, man, it looks good. It looks. I should be taking pictures. What kind of, you know, just slow down the port. Slow down the port. Slow down the port. Here we go. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Looking great. All right, but this is just a great testament to the fact that if you want to use pomegranate juice instead of cranberry juice because you're making a cocktail that complements a food item. Yeah. So in this case, we're doing something Lebanese. So I was like, oh, I know um, in the Middle East, pomegranate is is something that is often used. Let me find a, a cocktail that is pomegranate. Clearly, I didn't read what I was doing. Yeah. And so I made a pomegranate, poma whatever, a pomegranate. Posmata- there you Posmopolitan. go. Little uh, lemon twist. Yeah. Great. And that, my friend, is for you. Okay. So while you're drinking that, the easy to pronounce cosmopolitan, <laughs> the cosmopolitan folks. Um, I hope it's good with with. Oh, it's terrific. Is it nice? Ter- have a sip of it. Okay, let me have Come a sip on. of it. <clears throat> that is refreshing. That's going to send me on my way, huh? Oh, it's nice. A okay. lot of lime. I think that t- almost tastes like it has too much lime in it. You you, you got to go very heavy on the lime. Really? Turn me okay. off. I'm a big fan of the lime. Lime catering was my company. Oh, that's right. That's years. right. Yeah. So so. Here's one of what I want to talk about the cosmopolitan and the cosmopolitan and any mopolitan drink that you make, all right? Bring us all your mopolitan. So these are drinks that have gone out of fashion. They were in fashion in the 90s and they were the big thing because of Sex in the City. So the women on that mm. show were always drinking cosmopolitan, so much so that at a certain point within that television series, they stopped drinking it and they ask – uh, Carrie, which I think was played by Sarah Jessica Parker. Don't say uh, I think. You know exactly what's going on here. Don't pretend like you didn't watch well, okay, Sex in the City no, on I, a weekly I, basis. Marco, nobody's I've seen, buying it. I've seen a few episodes. <laughs> I can tell you there's Carrie, yep. Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah. There's um, Kim Cottrell. Cottrell, who plays the um, in, in, the one with in, without inhibitions or, or the – Sure, 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 You know, sure. the one who, who just does whatever she wants. I can't remember her name. Yeah. And then Cynthia Nixon plays the lawyery one sure. who's a little bit more reserved. And then the one with the dark hair and I don't know her name or her character's Our name. Our friend Bill Antonio would be so upset right now that you just don't know the, even the names of these actors. Kyle MacLachlan was in it. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, Barishnikov played a role in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One of them, I think, is called Sam. Sam, I think, There's is Sam. Kim Cattrall, right? Sure Kim so. Cattrall is Sam. Yeah. And then Cynthia Nixon. I think she just went by Cynthia Nixon in the show. Yeah. Samantha, uh, Charlotte, and Miranda. Yeah, yeah. You okay, there you go. Miranda yeah, Charlotte. One. Yeah. Which one are you? Because that was always the thing. <laughs> Who are you? I'm the one who wants to not play this game, okay. I would say. <laughs> All right. So here's what, what – it that, that show kind of killed um, – Kind of killed the Cosmo, right? Because it was it was just overdone, overdone, right? But it's it's a shame because it's a really lovely drink, and it's a it's a you know vodka mm-hmm. triple sec cranberry juice. In this case, I use pomegranate juice. Clearly, I, I wasn't thinking, and a squeeze of lime. Mm. Boom! Shake it up. Beautiful martini, cold, crisp, just just lovely. That's great. Yeah. And uh, is it coming back in the fashion? Or no. is this you? No, not no, even. No, I was just like, you know what? Every bartender should know how to make this, right? Every, everyone think. should know how to make this. And you know, it's a great February drink because it's it's really pink and red depending on what you use. Um, and some people can't – some people want to drink out of a martini glass but don't like martinis. They're too oh, strong. Oh, I'm the exact opposite. Right. I love martinis. This glass is like a – I want to murder the person who created oh, this you, thing. Oh, you're not a fan of the martini glass? The glass is it in your home. Yes. When, look, the, now the glass is not an issue. You ever right. go to the bar and buy a martini for somebody and then walk through a crowded sure. bar holding it up high, mm-hmm. half of it all on your arm and you get back and go, hey, uh, that was 15 bucks that I just wasted eight of. Maybe sure. you want to suck on my shirt. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna lick my forearms to get your the money's worth that I spent for you. Yeah. You know, anyway, I, it's, it's too much, too much rage on my part. But yeah, this is a terrible glass. Well, here's the thing. The interesting thing is, you, you'll be hard pressed now to find martini glasses because they're so expensive and they're so easy to break. In mm. restaurants, they choose not to use them, or they'll use short stemmed martini glasses so they yeah. don't have the long stem. I like a martini glass. It, in in fact, a little bit of peeling back the curtain. Mm-hmm. If you ever break a mar- martini glass near your ice, oh, good luck! That's you, the worst. You got you to drain the whole ice. Yeah. Because God forbid somebody finds glass in their drink. Right? You don't want to do that to somebody, to another human. Um, here, Mark, I'll have this bite. No, you don't want it. No, I, I do, but look, like, you don't have to no, make it a little bit. It. No, because I'm going to be making you another drink later. So, okay. So I don't want to be drinking too much. But I'll. Uh, but I can just go right. off the yeah. rails. Yeah, like yeah. A, yeah. Like no, no, I'll have, I'll have no some of yours. Sure, sure. Just, just throw some in here. Um, but uh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, just, to, just, just to give an idea of like breaking glasses, and maybe people might be like, "Who cares if you break a glass?" Depending on where you break it, 
It can be a, it's like the equivalent of a pool fouling, you know, everybody yeah. out of the pool, yeah. got to drain this thing. Only in and, some ways more dangerous. Of course. Uh, I will say this. Any well, bartender who do, if a piece of a kid's shit came in your mouth and you ingested it, you probably I mean, there is danger there, I think. Yeah, but is that danger as inherent as drinking a piece of glass and getting martini glass in, in your in your stomach and then having to pass that through Good. the other end? Debatable. Okay, fair enough. I'm Listen. just joking. Of course, that's horrible. I was thinking tiny pieces of glass. I was thinking tiny pieces, but something that could cut your. No, no. But even yeah, tiny yeah. pieces can can wreak a bit of havoc. Okay. I think there was an episode of uh, Sex in the City where <laughs> where Charlotte uh, drank a cocktail and had some pieces of glass. And in, in fact, it. it was Samantha who crushed the glass and put it in there because Samantha she was had a problem with it. Yeah, with but. Um, uh, oh, I can't remember another one of their names. Miranda. Miranda. Sam. Miranda was like the good one in that episode. She took the the one. Uh, I, f- I fucked it up. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, so nice effort. So listen, this is a cosmopolitan. It's a lovely drink. It might not be for you, but I don't think the fact that it's been overdone in the '90s should make it contraband or make mm. it like you know uh, the ugly stepchild of the cocktail world. What if you have uh, actual cranberry juice? You, you ever bought real cranberry juice? Yes. Super, super tart. Yep. Right? It feels like you're having something that's more, you know, uh, it's like the apple cider of the apple juice world sort of thing. Uh, do you think that, that would still it would just make a much more tart cocktail? Yeah, and I think that's – and be great. that paired with the lime juice is yeah. going to be a lovely – in fact, I would much prefer it with the tart cranberry Rather than and, one of these processed, yeah, these uh, processed things. I I used Palm, you know that that uh, company Palm for the pomegranate juice yeah. because it's 100 percent pomegranate juice from concentrate, but still it's still pretty great. I wasn't gonna cut a pomegranate and squeeze those little those little what do they call those little jewels of pomegranate they call seeds. Pomegranate seeds, buddy. Yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't put in the effort. I'm putting in the effort. I make something every day. You want to squeeze <laughs> a pomegranate? I'm, you're too good to squeeze you, a pomegranate? Do you know what kind of mess happens when you squeeze? Oh, yeah. And, and how it Those stains. stains. It'll stain stains. my hands. And then that's going to affect my career. So oh, the hands. The I'm, hands. I'm, if, you're just coming in, if you're coming in late on the show, Marco Timpano, uh, actor. Um, hand job uh, specialist. Hand job specialist. Hand model, yes. I was going to say. But yeah, I didn't know about the hand job specialist. <laughs> no, that's what we call it. When you book something, it's a hand job. You got right? a hand job. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. I just recently did a – I won't tell you the product – but I had to rub my belly as I was hungry in this particular commercial that's going to air. That's great. Uh, so I had to rub. And I'm like, you want my belly in this shot? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is great for me. But they <laughs> it was from chin down. So, oh, so okay, they, okay, okay. So you're just going to see a fat so guy. Kind of, you're like kind of a belly model now, yeah. too, you would say. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, there you, you go, man. This hey, show... leave some work for the rest of us, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this show pre- prepped me for that. Prep me for for belly model. Um, so this so on a scale from one to ten, how were you going to rate this particular cocktail? I'll tell you something. Yeah, tell me. Flavor wise, mm-hmm. this is uh, a nine on ten. Oh, really? Really okay. enjoying oh, it. Oh, good. Uh, experience wise, oh, my um, my lips are kind of tingling. Oh no! As though it's an allergic reaction, oh, but no. it hasn't it hasn't turned into anything more. Well, what could it be, though? Maybe it's... the the lime pesticides in the lime. No, or but I... I don't know the the the, the rind. I mean, the, what is the the lemon? The twist oh, of it's, lemon. It's grapefruit. Are you allergic to grapefruit? No, or... I'm not allergic to anything. Um... Or am I learning something about myself? Oh man! Right now? Jeez, imagine I just I hope... break out in hives. If this, w- oh and I man, just I hope... inflate and I can't leave the studio. I'm too big to leave here. Oh man, you're yeah. really. I'm gonna keep drinking it. It's you... nothing, but but it's like a weird. Um, I don't know. It's a weird thing. You're being such a Miranda right now. <laughs> <laughs> you shut up, Sam. You never talk to oh. me like that, Sam. I wish I knew who was. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is a Cosmopolitan. I recommend if you if you like this cocktail, don't fear ordering this cocktail. Just order it as like you mean confidently. it. Confidently. Confidently. Yeah. And here's the thing. If you don't want it in a martini glass. Ask for it in a rocks glass with, with rocks in it too. So rocks be nice. I'll have a Cosmo on the rocks in a rocks glass. Yeah. Hey, see? You just do it unapologetically. The, the lore of the Cosmopolitan was uh, quite extensive, so I decided to forego it. Uh, this is a. Uh, thank, this is a uh, on behalf of everyone listening, thank you, Marco. You and I your thought, lore. I thought you like when I tell I you do, the history. I do, but if if you are saying that it's extensive, there was just a lot. God knows where we were going to yeah, go. Yeah. Who knows what we were going to unearth? What I'll tell you is that it's a drink from the 1920s. 
yeah. became hugely popular in the 90s thanks to shows like Sex in the City and the cocktail culture that was happening in that particular time. It, was it known as a, a, a feminine drink at all? Yeah, or, it's, uh, it's always, or did Sex in the City make it that? Well, this is where the lore kind of comes into it too. Oh, so, I need the lore. Uh, well, the lore, like some of the lore says, or some of the history says that it was invented in a gay bar or in San Francisco and gay clientele were really enjoying it. And then some of the other lore say, no, it's from Manhattan. It was a classic cocktail, uh, martini-esque cocktail. So that's where that came from. And it was just quoting all the different bartenders. Go to our show, show notes. I'll, I'll put a link to the Wikipedia page so you can read all the lore you want. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you say the word lore one more time? Lore. There you go. Lore. Okay, perfect. I was I was afraid we were low on our lore quota today. Do you, when I say lore, do you hear lore or do you hear Yanni? <laughs> That's what I want to I know. just hear Yanni. That's you why just I, hear it's Yanni. so weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. All, all right, right, how about we eat, bud? Let's eat. This looks exciting. It, 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 you're just going to go, this looks exciting? People don't even know that I've gone and prepared something over here. What we're talking about today is tahini. And in an interesting coincidence, in Sex in the City, tahini uses lube. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm reaching here. Right. Uh, but, you know, I'm not against it. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, if somebody's doing it, it's great. It's sure. Probably. This is, again, the word uh, versatile comes into play. Yes. Super versatile ingredient. So what I made here on two steamed sweet potatoes. Right. Or could have been fish, could have been any kind of meat. Mm -hmm. I made a, a, a tahini butter. Oh. Now, some people are probably saying, whoa. What's this all about? Re redundant much? Se tahini is sesame seed butter and you're making a sesame seed butter butter? Relax. It's a mix of butter and tahini. It's not a crime on the on the level of chai tea. It's not. It's nothing horrible. Oh, why is chai tea? It's a crime. Oh, okay. chai is tea. You're basically oh, saying tea, tea tea. Okay, and you you're just you know Starbucks. Come on, right. get, get okay. it together. No hashtag for you, Starbucks. Fair enough. In this episode. Um, so what this is, you know, tahini, if you've ever had halva, if you've ever had hummus or hummus yeah. or hummus, however you pronounce it. I pronounce it hummus. You, you could do that as well. <laughs> that's another way to go. But not hamas. That's, not a, hummus. Diff that's a different that's thing. A, that's, a, <laughs> that's another type of terror in your mouth. None of this is terror. Why am I saying right. that? And then you have a, a, a baba ganoush. It's a, it's a key. It's a staple ingredient in baba ganoush. But I just wanted to go I'm not a big this. fan of baba ganoush. It's not my thing. A lot of the problem comes with how you pronounce it. If you, you haven't even committed to saying it properly, how are you going to enjoy it? Baba huh? ganoush. There you go. Okay. Okay. You got nervous on the word. <laughs> you still got a Hamas in your mind. You're trembling. You got the Hamas trembles is what you got. <clears throat> okay. What is it, – it's absolutely one of the easiest things to prepare. Says you. Says me. But okay. it's also – it does work, mm -hmm. but it is basically mm -hmm. ground – Sesame seeds. It's a paste made from ground sesame seeds. Um, I bought it. I will. I will. I have a picture of the the product. You bought the tahini. I bought the tahini okay. paste. Yeah. I mean, it's just it, it's a little bit easier. Like the way I buy peanut butter. People make their own peanut butter sure. all the time. Sure. But cleaning out the blender and, and all that. And those you people are, those are degenerates. degenerates. Let's 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 they, just, are, they have no respect. If for you them, make so. peanut butter and you're listening to this <laughs> podcast, just please know I consider you a degenerate. <laughs> you're not a degenerate. You're a person who likes to put in effort on yeah, things. Sure. But, but but you could be out doing other things with your life. Right. I think is what we're right. saying. So tahini. Why should I eat tahini? Why should Where I? Where will I eat it? Where will I eat Wait, do you want some lore? How, how should I should... give some lore yes. first? More lore. We need lore. Now, let me just tell you, when you eat tahini. Should I be eating this while you talk? Uh, you could eat it. Why not? Am I supposed huh? to squeeze the lime on it? Squeeze the lime on it. Enjoy like, your life. It's like two patties. It's like it's like sweet potato cutlets almost, yeah, you could say. Yeah, or it's like um, filet with a peppercorn sauce. <laughs> Only filet, it's... Filet, filet sweet potatillon? <laughs> Yeah, that is exactly so, what it is. Uh, no, I won't use the lime just yet. Ah, uh, it I was feel, a test. I was going to storm out of here yeah. if you limed it up Isn't first. Like that, uh, test from the Bronx Tale. If I open up the car door for you, I'm a gentleman. No, I don't know Not that. Like, no, have you never seen I've the seen Bronx it, Tale? I've seen it, but I can't. Well, remember and you that. can't remember that scene? No, tell me. Then you didn't see the Bronx Tale if you don't remember uh, that scene. Uh, anyways, I'm going to eat. You talk. All right. <laughs> you want to go into more Bronx Tale, or may I continue? Continue. I feel bad that I don't know that. Okay. So uh, you're eating a historical food, the likes of which you and your booze have never uh, seen. You, this is like serious. This is uh, – to, to get a, a little Marco Tempano in here, the historian Herodotus 
Herodotus, Herodotus, I think mm-hmm. is who it is, uh, wrote about the cultivation of sesame three thousand five hundred years ago in the in the Tigris and Euphrates, Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, buddy. Yeah, okay, man. we're going way back. We're going way back on this. It used to be an oil that people know sesame oil, right? They started grinding it, and uh, and now uh, let me tell you about where you can find. Uh, tahini. First of all, as I mentioned, the hummus and uh, and and you know that's that's the obvious one people would always know. And also, you know, uh, in Armenia they use it on lahmacun, which is like those small thin pizzas. Yum. In Turkey, uh, they make a dish called tahin pekmez, which is a, a breakfast dish. Uh, terrific in Iraq. It's known as rashi. They mix it with date syrup, and it becomes a sweet dessert that oh, you yum. get bread in. This is fantastic, by the way. No. This is really fantastic. I didn't like the way it looked. I'm like, no, this isn't going to... Gonna... And then you put a lot of sumac on it. And it's... I'm like, I don't know. I think it... my eyes were like, too much sumac, Marco. <laughs> not you like... have some faith in the guy who's uh, I got... been stuffing his face for I've, years. I've got a bit of a history with sumac. I got a problem because oh, yeah. I didn't get it when it was what's in Marco's mouth. I didn't get the sumac. Oh, yeah. So I've got a hey, that, that's but your this issue. Is... Don't hold that against sumac. You know, this is if you're becoming vegetarian. Yeah. This is great. I know. I know. And so, okay, on that note, let me just tell you this. Uh, I wanted to talk about in Persia, they make a dish called halvarde, halvarde, uh, which is tahini, sugar, egg white, southern ingredients, also a sweet, uh, a sweet dip, basically used, uh, you know, eaten at breakfast. In Cyprus, they eat it. In Greece, they eat it uh, either just on uh, alone or topped with honey and jam on bread. In Israel, obviously, and the reason I said let's wait for it, because in Israel is... You can't have falafel without tahini, right? right? And in right. all the Middle East, that's a, it's a classic pairing like peanut butter and jelly, basically. That's one of the things they served at the Last Supper. Uh, that may or may not be true. Uh, historically, that could be accurate, but also <laughs> I do know that he's completely making that up. Peter, pass the tahini. <laughs> it's something that uh, you Judas see had in it the last. Bible. Yeah, <laughs> Judas had it last. Uh, and in East Asia, sesame paste is a, is a condiment used for in, in noodles. If you ever had a dan dan noodle, there's black sesame soup, and uh, and then of course halva. Anyway, my point is, it is um, you're sleeping on tahini if you're not eating tahini and buying tahini and putting it in different things. And so even if you're not a vegetarian, I think it's just such a great condiment. One of my favorite things to make is something called taratur. Taratur, man, I'm so excited! I'm hitting that. Taratur is. I noticed you didn't make it for dip. me today. Well, this is very similar. Okay. This is very similar. So that's right. I'm, you know, this is all a plan, Marco. All I don't right. just talk uh, with reckless abandon. Okay. I'm going here. I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting to the recipe. But taratur is very, very simply. It's tahini. Is this one yours? It could be yours. You want it? You Do have you it. Mind? You enjoy it. I'll no, just have not. a little bit of it because now I want to try it with the lime. Oh, yeah, sure. Are you cool Absolutely. with that? I only I have should. a little piece of it. That yeah. way you can have because there's a fresh yeah. fork here for you. This guy's, Anyways, a, go this on, guy's a fucking monster. I, I, just want you I always interrupt you. I always monster. interrupt you. It's not about the interrupting. It's about eating my food. But I right. want you to eat it. It makes me feel good. I drank your drink earlier, which is probably why I'm as excited <laughs> as I am right now. Taratur. We're talking about tahini, uh, lemon juice. Now, a lot. I'm t- Almost one-to-one. Like a cup of tahini and then like a three-quarter cup of lemon juice. Damn straight. Uh, a little bit of water and then garlic and parsley and you bl- you blend that and that on any meat on any grilled meat is absolutely fantastic so this is inspired by terratour this is a sesame mm-hmm. seed butter so it's uh, I, I i saute a little bit of butter and garlic add tahini add lime juice uh, you can also put in a hot sauce i put a little bit of sriracha in there yeah. and then i topped it with sumac and uh, and chili flakes and it's uh, what a great compliment it's so to wonderful. this uh, Here, sweet I'll potato let you have some um you know this on on Meat would be fantastic, like you said. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, you know a French cream sauce that they would put, like a cognac sauce that mm-hmm. you would put on a filet mignon or some sort of fillet or a peppercorn sauce. Different flavor, but it has that thick richness. Yes, it does. That I love. That I love on my meat. Mm-hmm. So imagine that on okay, on uh, traditional meats that you would have in the Middle East. So like on a lamb, on a lamb chop. Not a big fan of lamb. But or, are you not? I don't. I don't. Lamb, mutton, let's uh, that whole family. Let's no, see what we can do with you. Like Come it. on. Come on. I'm For... going to bring in some goat curry and you're not going to enjoy it? Is that what you're saying? Mm. Curry Listen, goat I'll eat it. Yeah. I'll eat it to be nice. But am I going to love it? Mm. And you've tried it how many times? Like many you, you, times. Oh, so it's that thing like people do with me with cheesecake. You don't like cheesecake? See? See? You see? That's what I'm going I through. I, I want am. you to feel what I'm, I'm feeling. No cheesecake. What about a tiramisu? 
Yeah, tiramisu is oh, that has mascarpone in it. It's so. a different. It's okay, a different. Fine. It fine. doesn't taste like plaster that was used to put drywall on a goddamn board. And people, everybody for the last twenty years has been like, "You don't like cheesecake? Yeah, you haven't tried cheesecake at the Snowden. De- you haven't tried cheesecake Juniors. at. Ju- yeah. Everybody's got their place. Sure, I've tried all your goddamn cheesecakes. Fair enough. I don't care for them. Even went into making my own. I was making a mango cheesecake. Yum. Maybe the strawberries are too many. I made no. it. People loved it. I didn't even like my own cheesecake. I just and it's weird. I'm a fan of cake. Big fan of cheese. Cream cheese. Too big. Cream cheese is great. Together, it's doing. I just this pastiness in my mouth that I just don't enjoy, and I don't have the sweet tooth. It's just. What it's if I did me. this? What if I took a Montreal style bagel, <laughs> sliced it, yeah, toasted it, Philadelphia cream cheese. And some strawberry jam on it and serve that to you. Yeah, I could be into that. It's not cheesecake, but I just thought it's close. Yeah, yeah, just going to see. What about same bagel, toasted and buttered and cream cheese and then some uh, some ground lamb on it? No, no. Not for me. You're a jerk. No. What about? You're a jerk. You're disrespecting one of the best meats out there. Okay. Back to tahini, though. Can I can I propose this? <laughs> there to There will be lamb and goat in the studio. <laughs> God damn it! Listen, I'll I'll have it. Yeah. As long as while I'm eating that, you're eating cheesecake. Oh come on! Are you gonna be like that? I'm gonna huh? be like that. Montreal style bagel, yeah. sliced, toasted, tahini. Yeah. Wonderful Canadian honey. Yeah. Thinly sliced pear shards. Oh wow. Just the the smallest hint of cinnamon. Yeah. Will that work for you? And some goat on top. And so a little goat in the middle. No goat. You had a great thing going. Yeah. I shouldn't have uh, no, shit no, no, on no, it. Listen. I absolutely. I think that would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. So so the versatility of tahini. Oh, here. This is yours. It is. No, I'm good. I, I was, Are now you we, sure? Yeah. Now we're in you a conversation. I will have that. I will have that. Oh, yeah, maybe yeah. not on. Okay. Uh, not on air. Oh shit. Okay. This on air. Is this on air? This is on air. You can have it. Listen, it's there for you. It's there for me. Absolutely. Let me just put my. My my spoon away, so you're not eating my spoon. Uh, with God my forbid. spoon, God and it's forbid. a fork. <laughs> it's your, your spoon that's actually a fork. Yes. Um, now I don't remember what I was saying, but this is um, it's very versatile. This tahini. Yeah, you gave the example of the tahini uh, instead of a peanut butter or mm-hmm. a cashew butter, whatever type of butter you like, putting it on a bagel. This this is my whole point of it, illustrating how it's eaten across the world. I, you, you blew my mind with this. I never think of it as a sweet. I always think of it as a savory. Yeah. You can have tahini. We always have tahini in our fridge because my my wife loves hummus, right? Yeah, hummus, and uh, so she'll she'll use it for that. But if I make this and make a sweet version of it or a breakfast version of it, put it on your eggs or on the side of your eggs, yeah, with your with your beans or whatever you're having, this is great. This Absolutely. is great, my friend. I feel like a whole new world. We did an episode where I brought fool. I made fool. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, of course. Right? The yeah. beans. Yeah. Uh, t- tahini on top of that, drizzled on top of that is also absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. How often do you use tahini in your household? Well, I would say there is tahini in my house all the time. All the time. And right now we have this one upstairs and we have one downstairs in the cold room. And so now I'm – so basically I operate on um, – this is like my restaurant training. I, I love operate it. on inventory, right? So I'm inspired. I want to eat. That's the bottom line. And I'm inspired to make what I'm going to make. If I have like, man, we have this bag of chickpeas. I haven't opened this bag yet. Mm-hmm. It's been like three months sitting here, this bag. Yeah. Now I'm going to soak these overnight and I'm going to probably make either a chana masala or I'm going to make hummus. Right? We I see. Okay. Chickpeas. Yeah. Same thing goes for tahini. Now that we have this second tahini that I got, I must have seen it on sale or something. Mm-hmm. Now we have two tahini. So now I'm going to start. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to get into it. I'm going to probably roast an eggplant just so I can use the tahini, tahini in the baba ganoush. Ah. Yeah. What tahini do you look for? What do you buy? I'll tell you what I do. Yeah. And it's going to sound very, um, Wrong and yeah. maybe even slightly racist. Perfect. Okay. Every time somebody says maybe uh, racist, it's going to be 100%. racist. Yeah, I look for the yourself. tahini that has the Arabic script. Oh on it. yeah, don't be don't be ridiculous. I was going to because I because I go to I go to Middle Eastern stores. Uh, no, okay. no offense to the, uh, the you know the the, the 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 what do you want to call them? The North chicken. American North makers. American. <laughs> North American, uh, you know. I like that you went for an Italian. Yeah. For the, the Italian. <laughs> Just so you can understand. I'm trying to translate for you so you get it. Um, but, yeah, I always go to the Middle Eastern stores. Yeah. And at that point, I look for, you know, like a little bit of um, 
Look, you get what you pay for is sure. what I believe. So I don't want the the, the dollar store to heat. I don't want the dollar store. No, to neither do I. Know. But I also, you know, there's people out there doing there's a sucker born every minute. Sure. We, we charge ten bucks, people will pay it. Yeah. Not me, sir. No. Not me. So I look for sort of a, a middle of the road product that mm-hmm. they have plenty of. Sometimes if it's you know price to go, hey, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. But always yeah. at the Middle Eastern store. Always with Arabic writing on it. Good yeah. for you, Marco. Sorry, that, I, that's what. If I'm going to get to, if if I'm there yeah. at my supermarket and there's, it has the Arabic writing on it or just a normal sort of script that I can read. No. Let me tell you, if I'm yeah. at an Italian restaurant yeah. like this place uh, that I've talked to you about, this bread place, right? The Maticchioni. Maticchioni. Yeah. And they have like some. What? Who cares? What? If it's even, it's like canned anchovies. Yeah. And that can has absolutely no English in it yeah. on it. And it's just Italian yeah. writing. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm interested in buying it. I'm mm-hmm. like, that product's not even supposed to be here. Yeah, that is a special order that wasn't really meant to be. That's in this a country. contraband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want it. Now, what do I know? Maybe in Italy, people are like, this is the Budweiser of goddamn uh, anchovies. Right, this stuff sucks. Mm-hmm. But uh, these are the ways people can fool you. Yeah, there's this uh, jam that I buy that has. It's kind of all French writing. Oh, is that's it French? My... Okay, we have one that's, uh, I believe it's like Croatian. Oh, yes, that one. Then they do a plum one. Yeah. That's yeah, like you that's never see plum jam. And yeah. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, I, I this, think that's this, a plum. Yeah, this, I don't know how to read any of this. But if you're going to make a crostata, you yeah. want to use the jam yeah. that's made and in writing that you don't understand. That's how I feel. Yeah. A good I'm crostata is made that way. I wonder if you could make a tahini crostata. You can do whatever you want. All right, fair enough. Well, that was fantastic, Good, my friend. Bud. Oh, I wanted I to ask you, um, tahini, healthy for you, bad for you? Which is it? It is a good fat. Yes. It is one of the healthier fats. When people talk about the Middle Eastern diet, mm-hmm. right? The I've Mediterranean never heard diet. anybody talk about You've the Middle Eastern the, diet. The I've heard the Mediterranean, Mediterranean <laughs> diet. You know what? That's the racist thing that you just said. No, uh, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm listening. Just joking. I'm, I'm being Charlotte right you know now. What I, I'm being know, Charlotte. Yeah, you, you know what I did? I did, uh, I did cranberry when I meant pomegranate. <laughs> Mid- Mediterranean diet. But these countries, yeah. Lebanon, North of Egypt, I mean, these, these are Middle Eastern countries right. that fall into the Mediterranean diet. If you think of a Lebanese Wait a diet, second. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. We, wait a we second. Invite, you can't we say. France. Yeah. We invite Spain into our, 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 our little you know Mediterranean here, but uh, Italy, obviously, but... Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, no. You, you can't you stretch me, it that far. The Mediterranean. You, know, you want me to stretch it that far? No, I mean, let me hold. I'll, on. Okay. I'll give you. While you go on okay, your rant, get, let me look up. Listen, stuff. yeah, look up the. Listen, if you tell me the Middle Eastern diet, tahini, baba ganoush, and things like that, healthy for you, great, lose weight, feel fit. Yeah, I'll totally buy that. Okay. But at a certain point, we have to we have to say, the Mediterranean diet encompasses. This area of the world, you can't be like you know, Iceland okay. is in the Mediterranean. All right, All right like Here, prove, me prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. People have asked. Okay, morons have asked. What is considered the Mediterranean? Yeah, well, the Mediterranean countries include France. Talking to the Spain, mic, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Italy, the big yeah, moment for you, you I'm right. sure. Greece, yes, for and sure. Portugal, yes, Portugal along yes. the north. Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, and Israel on the east, and the African countries of Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia. That's on what the I've been south. saying all this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Listen, then I'm going to give it to you. That's I didn't realize it stretched all around there. Anyway, these are people who are eating well. Let's all yeah. let's agree. A that you are ignorant, and B I'm that fat because <laughs> I'm not eating that way. That you, but you could. It's there. It's all I should. there for you. I should. Yeah. So it's a, it's an exciting time to be alive. It's great. It's great. I love tahini. I can't wait to have it for breakfast, and I can't wait to do sweet things with it. No, I mean <laughs> that sounded so perverse, but I was all no. On but board. I mean like honey and mm. and dates. Yeah, yeah. Pomegranate. Yeah, well, Would a, it go well with pomegranate? And halva, and it's like yeah, uh, yeah. or halva. Or you know what we didn't halva. do is I didn't try this with the Cosmo that I made. The Posmo. Do you have more Cosmo no, down there a, in the drink cart? No, gotcha. You just, just a little you, uh, a drop. You lick your, you stick your tongue into. Oh, the Oh, it's bottom. nice. It, it it pairs well. So I will tell you on yeah. that note. If you had the work ethic of a man who had bought a pomegranate and and <laughs> opened it up and right. deseeded it, uh, and obviously I could have done the same thing with the tea, with pomegranate the on that mm-hmm. on that very dish that I just served oh. you this week would have been. Just fantastic. Oh. That is the that's the show stopping ingredient. Now I'm sad that I didn't. Yeah, no, I no, no. That's but not you know what? what to be fair, I went to the, to to Sobeys, which is the grocery store closest to my house, mm-hmm. and I asked the grocer. I said, "Where's your pomegranates?" He was like, "No pomegranates." Okay. And I'm like, "Come on, it's pomegranate season now. Winter is pomegranate season, is it not?" Uh, 
it doesn't really work like that anymore. Everything is everything. No, 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 season, Bello. In a that, way, this know? is. I know. This is. Look, they can get stuff that's in season in parts of the world and bring it over here, but it's five dollars a pomegranate. But yeah, I think you're right because a month ago, I, it's you, like a dollar fifty. A it pomegranate. was like yeah, you couldn't yeah. you couldn't shake a dead cat without hitting a pomegranate. <laughs> On that note, if, uh, you know, Sobeys has asked that you stop taking your dead cat to uh, to the grocery store. How else do I know if the melons are ripe? I thump it with a dead cat. Oh, we're gonna have That's animal lovers. That's I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking, folks. I I, I would never do that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I know there's gonna I be let animal you shit lovers. In it. I didn't even want to say anything. I was like, let you earn. I'm you already earn gonna get people say. who are gonna be mad at me because I I was being very selective with who who belongs in the Mediterranean. Oh diet. yeah. Okay. So already I'm gonna get hate mail there. Yeah, but yeah, you know yeah. what? Today, no. Stress. I'm gonna send you a couple anonymously myself. Actually, <laughs> if you don't mind, just to kick start it, guys. Don't worry. Don't feel shy. I'm gonna start the hate, and you bring it. You come up. You bring up the rear, as they say. You mm. are soldiers in the army against Marco's ignorance. Why? Why is this podcast all about? <laughs> Ways we can belittle Marco. I just, I just, I love the confidence. Just, what? You want to bring in Lebanon now to the Mediterranean? I'm like, I want to bring it. Let's go to the, let's go to the internet. Uh, speaking of ways to belittle me. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Favorite part of the show. Coming right up. What's in Marco's mouth? That's right. What's in Marco's mouth? It's nothing dirty. We'll be guessing. We'll be messing. Let's find out. What's in Okay, now let me just fix this blindfold. I want to dedicate this uh, What's in Marco's Mouth to uh, Mario Cantone, who, uh, who was on Sex in the City, uh, who I find very funny. And, um, he is. He is. I think he was a stand-up. Was yeah, he, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. He still does. He does stuff on Broadway now. He's pretty. Have you, have you ever met him? Have you ever done stand-up? I have uh, not done. No, no, no. 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 Um, he's great. And I remember, actually, I watched um, uh, one of the movies. Amanda, Amanda had it on. Uh, it was a really bad one, and he was great in it. He was the only thing that I really enjoyed. So I'm going to dedicate this segment to Mary, Mario Cantone. Uh, you know, I think if he's listening, he'll really appreciate that as well, Marco. Well, now it sounds like I'm I'm dedicating in a segment where things go in the mouth. I, I'm starting to sound a little uh, um, inappropriate. Now I feel bad. Okay. I, All right. Um, what I did is I put that on video, and I think that. that no, you didn't. <laughs> You're killing me. You with That's a, not fair. You, That's with a, a, you with a blindfold on, talking seriously about stuff. It's just. It's very funny. It's very good for me. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So, I feel like if anything ever happens to your heart, I will be like fifteen percent to blame. Oh man. Because they're going to be like, what? Why? Why? What? What happened to his heart? What happened? Why is he in? I see you right now. Well, his heart gave out. Right. <laughs> Why? Stress. Oh, and then I'm going to be like, oh, man, for sure what's in Marco's mouth played a role in that. Because I, we, we have no interest in what's in Ali's mouth. And, uh, it's just Listen, terrible. we can we can swap this segment anytime you want. I'm <laughs> happy. I'll even there. sing. It's the alliteration, Marco. It's not there. What's in Ali's mouth? Ah, oh, sounds terrible. All right. Buddy, you ready for this? Can it go in my hand? E- eventually. First, okay. you put it in your mouth. All right. I'm going to move away from the mic. And as am okay. I. And I get uh, closer to your mouth. And, and there uh, it is. Okay. <laughs> I feel like eating one too. You're always giving me these um, pickled things, man. <laughs> it's like my favorite thing to do with stuff. This pickle is it. a pickled sour. It's almost like a pickle. Um, it's almost like a gherkin or something. It's like a. It's a pickled. It's pickled. It's German or Polish pickled. So I'm going to say that I don't feel like it's South Asian or sorry, um, Asian or Korean pickled. I feel like it's more of a Eastern European pickle uh, taste to it. So I taste a little bit of dill. Um, It's got a bit of tooth to it. And that's why I'm thinking cucumber. So an actual pickle. Um, And it's not a fresh pickle. Or new dill. It's more of a classic sort of kosher dill pickle. That's where I'm heading to right now. Definitely green in color. Okay, can I hold it in my hand? Yes, you can. Here it is. Oh, 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 no. Okay. (laughs) Those are weird noises. That's that's thrown me off because now it's long and uh, rectangular. Uh, No, see, now it has a different taste to it now that I'm tasting it like this. Isn't that interesting that you... uh... 
you felt it and then it tasted differently? It's not asparagus, but it feels like the size of asparagus. This is not asparagus. Again, but who would pickle asparagus like this? Um, <laughs> this is this is the best. This is the best for me. When you you get confident, you get cocky. You're like I know what this is. I'm getting there, and then you go, oh, oh, what is? I, uh, I love this. What do you got, bud? Is it daikon? Is it pickled daikon? Could it be? No, it can't be. It's something. It's something. Uh, what's long like that? Oh, you threw me off now with that. It's not asparagus. It's so it's it's long and square shaped, almost like a long dice. If you were to take a dice and stretch it, um, oh, I know this flavor. You're killing me. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna say it is pickled. Uh, pickled. Uh, what's long and thing? Pickled. It's not radish. Uh, okay. All right, buddy. Okay, what pickled. Pickled um, uh, rutabaga. All right. All right. Can I take my blindfold off? You can. Off? Okay. You were – I can't believe you didn't say it. Turnips. Were, oh. Pickled turnips. You were almost there, oh. buddy. You were almost there. So I, this is – in my mind oh. – Isn't it a rutabaga turnip? Is it? Do you no, want me to it's not. It's not. I know it's Eastern? not. It's not. It's not. It's so not. <laughs> You're very, very close, though. I oh. mean, I was like, he's going to say turnip any second now. Uh, I felt like I just fell brand. off the rutabaga truck. This <laughs> – this was on. Uh, this was on theme, I should say, with my tahini. Because uh, if you get uh, a, a really good shawarma sandwich, yes, yes, right, yes, that's what, where I know it from. Yeah. That's why I. So I, I felt like I was. I was cheating myself by like like last time. No, our last show. Yeah. I had already been talking about right. lentils, and then you know we were in that space, and then mm. so I kind of gave away lentils, and I was like, I think I'm doing it again. No, but no. here we are. Yeah, good for uh, you. Good and it's you. not even green, and I said it was green. I, I didn't even. You, say, you think yeah. everything's green for some reason when that blindfold <laughs> Most things on. you give me are green. Are they? No. <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm disappointed in myself. No, and, and, and so is everybody listening. Uh, <laughs> not only on this, but a couple of things you've done today oh, have really let people down. I'm the worst. I know. Well, well, listen, I hope you enjoyed the Sex in the City episode that we created <laughs> for you today. Uh, uh, if you have a suggestion of what Ali should put in my mouth, Relax, relax with what your thoughts right now. Or, or bring them. Bring or, them. Or, I mean, <laughs> hey, this is a private email that's coming right to me. You don't worry about what Marco says. You give me some ideas and uh, fast Sub- forward to a, a week from now and I'm putting gravel in your mouth. Uh, <laughs> Subject I want to thank Donna in Newark for that suggestion. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah, just send us an email at podcasteatdrink at gmail.com. This has been a great episode. This was a lot of fun. Thank it you, was. my friend. I, I took a ch- more chill approach to this episode. Yeah, yeah, you sure did. It was weird that you didn't spill anything, but I, I enjoyed it nevertheless. Until we eat again. We hope you got your fill of Eat and Drink with Ali Hassan and Marco Timpano. Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast Eat Drink. Email them your cocktail and food suggestions to podcasteatdrink at gmail.com. Until the next episode, bottoms up.